At no time in history have we had access to so much information. But it's never been harder to work out what's true as we live our lives increasingly on the web. As long as it's on Facebook and people can see it, as long as it's on social media, people start believing it. Fake news, fake facts and fake promises. The truth on the internet is being held hostage by hoaxers and hackers and politicians who lie. President Obama, he is the founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS. And there are many now who fear that our very democracies are under threat. The FBI is investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. There is an information war because there are people who are creating, fabricating information to push a political or social agenda. And that has been very effective. And it's been more effective, to be honest, than the truth in many ways. This old saying that a lie can be halfway around the world before the truth has got its pants on. That is infinitely more so now than it was before, simply because of the existence of social media and the internet. What we seem to have seen is, is Russia generally attempting to undermine the sort of coherence and the strength of the West, so undermining democracy. Truth is just paramount. It's just unquestionable that, that you should be telling the truth. Um, and I think we've completely lost any, any sense of that in our politicians. Fake news is partly popular because people are frustrated about politics in general and perhaps about mainstream journalism in particular. Democracy is currently threatened by um, the sort of free-for-all on social media. It's a real mess right now and we're going to have to come up with a new idea of what true reality fakeness is. The terrorist attack on Westminster illustrates how a news event unfolds in the internet age. I saw the vehicle mount the curb, and it was coming out so quickly, um, I saw some people be hit in front of me. Within moments, genuine first-hand accounts and photographs are being shared on social media. But BuzzFeed News, one of the most effective lie hunters on the internet, is also listing the lies. Russian television puts up a picture it claims is of the killer. It is in fact a man with a knife who was tasered outside Buckingham Palace in 2013. A tweet by an organization called Defend Europa claims that London Mayor Sadiq Khan has said these things are normal, so let's not worry about it. In fact, the interview is from 2016 when he said that large cities had to be prepared for attacks. Channel 4 News and other organizations wrongly identify the attacker as a man who is actually in prison. They quickly correct the error. And everyone is sharing an image of a London Underground sign that says Londoners will drink tea and jolly well carry on. It's fake. The snapshot illustrates the wide variety of fake news online. Some harmless hoaxes, some genuine mistakes made in the heat of a breaking news story, but others politically motivated. The strength of the internet is at the same time its weakness. The strength of the internet is you know, we now have uh, access to much more information than we've ever had before. But equally, because that information is not controlled, nor should it be, you know, it becomes easier for people to influence the agenda. An ever-increasing number of people now get their news via social media, predominantly Facebook. And it's the algorithms on which social media is based that are increasingly controlling what news we read. Algorithms run our lives. They dictate what we see online. And what they do is, in, to take a simple example, Facebook and its news feed, what the algorithms do is they calculate based on all your um, history of searching and everything that the computers know about you and the relative popularity of the stories that are around at any given moment, they calculate what you are most likely to want to click on. Now, the algorithms as presently designed make no uh, reference to whether those are true or not. 
We've always had misinformation in one kind or another, whether that's just rumours or whether that's hoaxes, but on social media, it has the ability to travel much further and much faster. It's also often more believable when it's being shared by a friend or a family member. And equally, that very visual information kind of bypasses our, our critical thinking sometimes. Facebook's business model really doesn't care whether something is fake or not. All it cares about is how often it gets shared and how much traffic is generated. So the more shareable a story is, and the more sensational, the more advertising it attracts. A principle which made a bunch of enterprising teenagers in Macedonia very rich during the US election. They would have a really salacious story on it. One of them was that Trump was being endorsed by the Pope. It was something that you would click on it and think, oh my God, that can't be true. The whole purpose of it is to get clicks. The story of the Pope allegedly supporting Trump um, came out was one of the most highly shared stories in the build-up to the election, but that was completely fabricated by a website which probably made an awful lot of money in advertising around the story. These virtual reality lies can have real-life repercussions. The gunman was apparently motivated by a bogus news story. It was an online story that Hillary Clinton was, was running a paedophile ring in the basement of a pizzeria. Now, a man went in, he'd driven across two states, and he turned up with a gun and started firing it into the ceiling, demanding to know where this paedophile ring and where the children were being held by Hillary. Now, that's bizarre, because that, when you see that in your you know, Facebook feed, you think, well, no one's going to believe that. And yet, actually, I know I've just been in the southern states of America. People do believe this stuff. They really do. The internet is fertile ground for fake news to grow. But it's also been boosted by a widespread crisis of faith in politicians, exacerbated by spin and untruths. There has been for years a real mistrust in politicians and in the media, which I actually don't think is a good thing at all. Blair really is a good example of where this not necessarily started but found its sharp point around the Iraq war. Fake news didn't come out of nowhere and a lot of politicians at the moment are leading the charge and kind of clarion call against it but actually politicians and the media have had a lot to do with it. The upsurge in anti-establishment anger has spawned populism. Populism has thrived on half-truths and faked facts. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Do you think that the British taxpayer should be supporting Spanish bullfighting? No! Absolutely not! Fake news essentially bolsters fake promises, uh, and populists make fake promises. Populism was the driving force behind the big electoral earthquakes of 2016. Huzzah! Independence Day! Brexit and the election of Donald Trump. And in both campaigns, fake news played a major role. There are certainly pieces of misinformation which support populist ideas like issues of immigration, which is probably the most common, uh, the, the subject with the most amount of misinformation around it online. At the moment, we have no control over our borders. Having taken more than one million asylum seekers is going to cause huge problems in Germany. With Brexit, with the international bank saying that there will be an absolute collapse of uh, the economy and you know everything's going to go to hell if this happens, and it was, I mean, absolute outright lies and spin and exaggeration. The shock to our economy after leaving Europe would tip the country into recession. At least half a million jobs would be lost. There was a lot of information disseminated that that was you know, very, very questionable. There was a kind of panic afterwards because it felt that people could say absolutely anything and that it would be believed in some significant quarters. It was during Brexit and the US election that the term fake news became current in another sense. More and more the term has been weaponized, really, um, to, to kind of delegitimize certain viewpoints. You are a racist, no good American. I was just called a racist. Care people get frustrated and dismiss people they disagree with as not real people. We all think we're the real person and people that uh, disagree with us are somehow wrong or false and that their news is somehow fake news. Yeah.
Fake news reached a crescendo during the US election, whether motivated by politics, profit, or sheer malicious intent. In the build-up to the US election, we saw an awful lot of stories which were created and shared widely, which there were, had absolutely no basis in the truth. Um, how that influenced the election, it's very, very difficult to say. A video was shown on YouTube which claimed to be ballot boxes being stuffed in the US. In fact, the pictures came from elections in Russia. A report that Hillary Clinton's supporters could vote online from home whilst Trump supporters had to go to the polls was widely shared. Who can say whether it was decisive? We'll never know that. But what we do know is that a lot of, a lot of false information you know, by the traditional idea of force, <laughs> i.e. not in someone's imagination. Um, a lot of false news was disseminated through social media and it certainly was believed. There's so much active misinformation and it's packaged very well and it looks the same when you see it on a Facebook page or you turn on your television. The other factor that, uh, that became clear in the States was actual foreign state interference. Russia clearly denies it, but it is accused of, for example, of, you know, of hacking into the Democrats' email system and, and releasing uh, damaging stuff at a, at a critical time. Russian efforts were not so much about um, getting Trump into power as being about undermining Hillary Clinton, who was, of course, expected until the very last minute to win. Um, so a weakened Hillary was the choice. For Putin, this was a wonderful, wonderful no development. Price. Because in the eyes of the Russian population, and he is, by the way, approaching a new election soon, that he was a great leader. He could actually replace American presidents. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. There are so many hackers nowadays. Now, for him, for the domestic consumption, it was wonderful. That's why there was a very lazy response from the Kremlin about the scandal, because it was actually playing into the hands of Putin. Whatever the impact of fake news on the US election, it's made the issue impossible to ignore. How much of an effect it had on the election, it's, it's almost impossible to say, you know, how people voted and why they voted and contributing factors. But it certainly played a part in the, in the discussion and, and certainly brought it to the mainstream. With crucial elections in France and Germany this year, that the fear of influence of fake news on democracy is galvanizing governments across Europe. The election of Donald Trump has signaled that it's a real game changer for all of us. I think he's done us a favor. I think he's, he's issued a stern wake-up call and a lot of things which we were taking for granted, which we can no longer take for granted, we don't anymore.